So how are you doing today? I saw more dads um, carrying refrigerators in the past three hours than I've seen in my entire life. It's wonderful. So how many of you actually made it to the sale of used goods in the College Center? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, uh, we have such an incredibly vibrant student community that's committed to um, environmental sustainability. So recycle, recycle, recycle. Um, great lamps and refrigerators and quirky little pieces of furniture all in there at the same time. Well, we have a, um, an ambitious, thank you so much, an ambitious um, agenda today. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about what you might be experiencing right now, what your sons and daughters will experience over the next many weeks and months and years to come, and also provide you with some information about resources on, on campus. Uh, and then I'll, after we finish here, there will be a couple of sessions going on concurrently all over the building, and I'll uh, ensure that you have some direction there. So, excuse me while I just make my way over to the podium. So, as I mentioned before, my name is Sylvia Spears and I'm Acting Dean of the College. Thank you so much for taking the time to, um, to be here and to uh, come together um, as the parents and families of Dartmouth students. Um, before we begin today's discussion, I have to make a confession. I am a recovering helicopter parent. <laughs> Despite a professional career in higher education, 10 years of which I was a, a faculty member actually studying college student development. What happens? What's the appropriate connection between family and home? How, how much do you allow them to fly and how much do you hold on? I did research on those very topics. But nonetheless, I became a helicopter parent the moment my daughter, who is now 25 years old, was delivered to college seven years ago. I swore I wouldn't do it. I had seen so many parents fall into the trap. I had all the research at my fingertips to remind me about the negative impact helicopter parents can have on students' development and success at college. <laughs> Nonetheless, on the first day of my daughter's orientation, we drove her to campus. You might remember that from earlier this morning or last night. <laughs> These peer orientation leaders came bounding out of the residence halls, welcoming her to college with bullhorns in hands, Rhode Island is in the house. I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I was so excited. My daughter thought it was the dumbest thing she'd ever seen. I quickly became best friends with the orientation counselor who helped us to move things into her room. I had run orientation programs. So this orientation leader and I, we had lots to chat about. I talked about 1977 when I was a member of the freshman orientation workshop leader team. We were called FOWL. It was terrible. But I, I had lots to talk about. My daughter gave me that look of disdain. You know the one. It's the there she goes again. I could just crawl into a hole look. So anyway, as we started to settle into her room, notice I said as we started to settle, not she started to settle into the room, I suddenly found myself hanging curtains, making her bed. I hadn't made her bed in years. But suddenly some strange parental thing was happening inside of me. I was tucking in sheets, spreading out the wrinkled comforter, I even tormented my husband about setting up her new computer. He wasn't moving fast enough. Of course, it was long enough ago that people, not everybody had a laptop. I helped my daughter uh, organize her desk, put away her clothes. I even pointed out all of the places in the area where she could buy laundry detergent. You know the big, big, big jugs? 
laundry detergent. She looked at me like aliens had descended from the skies and taken over her mother's body. When we left my daughter at school later that day, I was comforted by the fact that I, I had done everything I possibly could to help her get settled and to help her adjust to her, her new life at college. As we were driving through Connecticut, my husband looked at me and just said nonchalantly, are you okay? I lost it. I cried. No, I mean I cried all the way through Connecticut. That's a lot of crying. In that moment, I bounded into the full throes of becoming a helicopter parent. For those of you who are wondering what a helicopter parent means, it's a term used to describe some of us who are overly involved in our child's college experience. Rumor has it that there's a whole generation of us who hover too much over our children. On the other hand, there are many, me included, that believe that helicopter parents get a bit of a bad rap because the reality is that some level of parental and family involvement is necessary for a successful transition to college and a successful college experience. The reality is that there's a little bit of helicopter parent in all of us. Having your son or daughter leave home or come go off to college, especially if they're the first to go off to college, is a pretty significant event. For how many of you is this your first time sending someone off to college? Wow, that's, that's a lot of you. So the, can the parents who are on their second and third or maybe fourth time raise your hands too? Now, the first time, leave your hands up. Now, those of you who are first time timers, these people will be of great support to you. So before you leave, make sure you buddy up with somebody who's willing to say it will all be okay. It's a, it's a significant moment for all of us no matter what. It marks not only a transition in your son or daughter's life, but also in your life. It is a moment filled with excitement and anxiety. It's full of hope and also concern. It's full of joy and just a little bit of sorrow. It's such a bittersweet moment. So here's some guidance from a recovering helicopter parent. Recognize that your feelings about, uh, the feelings of ambivalence about your son or daughter leaving home are normal. There will be moments when you will experience separation anxiety and so will they. And there will be moments, we'll whisper this one, when you'll be thrilled about having a little bit more peace in your house. Allow yourself to feel whatever comes up. You may want to refrain from running up and down the street in your neighborhood singing, I'm free, I'm free. Take comfort in the fact that coming to college is an important developmental step toward adulthood. It truly represents the culmination of all of your hard work. You should be proud of yourselves. With that said, your work is not done. You are the parent of an almost adult, an emerging adult, a wannabe adult, pretty darn close to being an adult. He or she will still need your support and guidance, even when they sound like you can't possibly understand what's going on for them. Here are a few of the messages you might hear. One day, you might get a phone call, and it might sound like, help, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm really worried about X, Y, and Z. The next day, you might get a phone call from them that says, I don't need your help. I know what I'm doing. My daughter did that with a kind of a neck thing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> On one call from college during my daughter's first weeks of school, she called all stressed out about classes and roommates and writing papers. She eagerly listened to my advice. I said, get organized, 
do one thing at a time, make a list, prioritize, and so on and so forth. I hung up the phone feeling really good. I still had my super mom cape on. Two days later, she called with the same concerns. I jumped into gear, and all of my good effort was promptly rejected. I was devastated. It can be difficult to know when to help and when to step back. The best advice I can give is to remain steady and recognize that there will be ups and downs in your students' needs and expectations of you. Just know you haven't lost your mind. You're just a parent of a college student. You will also hear your sons or daughters say, college is different than I thought I would, it would be. Students often have preconceived notions about what the college experience is going to be. They may discover that what made them great students in high school doesn't work in college. They may find that they have to work harder or smarter or differently. Ultimately, they will also learn when to ask for help and when to resolve issues on their own. My favorite issue that faced me when my daughter went off to college was whose decision is it anyhow when big issues have to be decided? Most of us have a high investment in our students' decisions. Things can get a little tricky when we're more invested in the decision and the outcome than they are. Although it may be hard on us to accept, students often don't step up, step up to the task of being responsible until we as parents step back just a little bit. Taking a step back can be scary because there's no guarantee that your son or daughter will assume full responsibility or that they'll make the same decision that you would. But be courageous in helping them to develop their decision-making skills. You might also be presently surprised when they land on the right decision without you having to say a word. My favorite experience, though, came at the first Thanksgiving. It's the I'm back issue. Just when you've settled into life, minus one son or daughter, and you have it all figured out, you've got a new rhythm, you have a new way of being, you've got a little free time, you don't have to fight over who has the car keys, and all of a sudden they come back for school break. The first visit home from college is usually a joy for the entire family. There are those initial moments of excitement, the big family dinners, you know the one where you pull out all of their favorite food. And don't forget the piles of dirty laundry will come home as well if you're close enough that they can pack up a whole suitcase of dirty clothes. You will inevit inevitably think all the rules of the house that were, in, were intact when they left are still the same. The problem is, it's likely that they'll have a different perspective as they try to assert their newfound independence. I encourage you to work through it. We have no choice. Talk it out, come up with some new norms that honor your family's needs and recognizes your son or daughter's growing independence. Despite all the challenges that might come with the transition to college and in the next four years, recognize that your sons and daughters are growing in incredible ways. They are finding their voice, developing independence, and truly becoming an adult. We can expect that there will be drama. And when drama ensues, consider the possibility that the situation may not be as bad as it sounds. Instead of calling the Calvary, listen, empathize, and find out what's really going on. Embrace the change that's about to uh, land at your doorstep. Remember that your child's collegiate independence is a credit to you. It's the, the, the positive outcome of all of your work. 
The reality is that your sons and daughters do not need you less. They just need you in a different way. So my best advice, parent to parent, is to give your child two things, roots and wings. Roots to help ground them in the stability of what they have known and are familiar with, the foundation and wings which will allow them to fly as they embark on this new adventure called college. I'll also offer something that I shared with parents last year. It's called the Parent Honor Code. The Parent Honor Code um, could be a mantra for any parent of a college-bound student. And it goes something like this. On my honor, I will try to allow my child to be a, an adult, even if it stinks for me. <laughs> so, my friends, raise your right hand. <laughs> be brave, be courageous. Are you ready? On my honor, I will try to allow my child to be an adult even if it stinks for me. <laughs> so now we, we have an eternal bond. We must do that. So now that you have a sense of what's going to be going on for you, for your sons and daughters, I'd like to share just a little bit about what we will do to ensure that your sons and daughters have um, support and are successful at Dartmouth. Even though they uh, we want your sons and daughters to have wings. They also need a safety net. And so, um, here we go. So there are a variety of um, programs and uh, a network for support that ensures success for your sons and daughters. We have a vibrant community of faculty, administrators, and staff who are involved in advising and supporting students. There are a host of resources at different locations that students can access, and we intentionally have a decentralized system that allows students to have many points of contact because students' needs indeed change over time. Each first-year student is assigned an advisor from the faculty, but there are other sources of academic information and personal support. Um, some of that comes from department chairs, the registrar's office, other professors, trained peer advisors in the residence halls and outside of the residence halls, and the incredible staff of undergraduate deans. The office of the dean of undergraduate students seeks to support the academic success and personal development of undergraduate students. They're dedicated to listening to students, to helping them navigate Dartmouth policies, and to educating them about important resources. We have an incredible staff in the undergraduate dean's office, and I see a few of them back over here in the corner. So some of them, and I'm just gonna quickly uh, read some names, and if you'll wave your hand, I know everybody's not here, um, but I'll also, T.O.B. Gomez, Colleen Larimore, John Fister, Lee Reme, Lisa Toom, Kent Yurchik Shoemaker over here on the corner. We also have some staff from the undergraduate dean's office, Kathleen Conine, Colleen Murphy, Michelle Poisson, Eileen Sanchez, Beth Ann Tillotson, raise your hand, and Erica Tillotson. This is an incredible group of people. And if you don't remember anything that I said today, when in doubt, or when you have a question, or a concern, or a worry, or just, gee, I don't understand how a, system, a, a particular system here at Dartmouth works, call the undergraduate dean's office. Call the undergraduate dean's office. They're the hub of all, and can connect you and students to every other resource on campus. So here's a, a, a brief overview of some of their functions. 
they conduct individual student advising. And that advising can go from academic to personal to social issues. Um, they assist um, students in navigating the curriculum and also serve as a, a, a place of support during disciplinary proceedings. We really hope that we never see your sons and daughters in disciplinary proceedings. We also know that sometimes people make mistakes and we help them to learn and to grow as a result of them. The deans are also charged with the administration of college policies and regulations, responding to student crises. Um, just so that you are aware, um, our safety and security office is up and running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Even on weekends and in evenings when classes, when offices are closed, we have what's called a dean on call system. So if anything happens, your son or daughter gets ill, they don't feel well, um, something's up, maybe something's happening at home and you need to make contact with them, our on call system assures that we can respond quickly and effectively to any um, concerns that come up. We also maintain an, uh, student records and uh, deans do a pretty good job of ensuring confidentiality. Sometimes we will ask your son or daughter for permission to share information, even with you. But you should also know that if there's something that's significant that's going on, we're going to call. And that doesn't mean it's a crisis, it doesn't mean it's a problem. It means we need your help. And the more we can partner, the better off and the more effective we can be. So what's the scope of work? If you looked at a dean's schedule in any given day, what would they be doing? Primarily, um, these things, academic advising, that's looking at course selection, academic per performance, scholarships, uh, off-campus opportunities, and so much more. They'd be advising students on hearings and petitions and appeals, some of the procedural issues of life at Dartmouth. They'd be doing major and career advising, usually as the first stop, because then we are likely to refer to our career services department that are, who are specialists in that area. Personal advising, we also will help students work through some minor issues about roommate conflicts, financial matters, health concerns, and, fa and family challenges. If these things rise to a level that we think a higher level of counseling and support um, is needed, we'll connect them to um, counseling center, health services, and other people on campus. And of course, there are incredible outreach programs and groups. We have a student's advisory council for the deans, outreach programs like Deciphering Your Dartmouth that bring folks together from across the campus, support groups, discussion groups, and even this wonderful group of school students called DOCSCS, or the Dean's Office Student Consultants. See, look at that, it's magical, isn't it? Um, DOCs are trained by the undergraduate deans and actually they just did training a couple of days ago and they provide peer advising. So just um, as you may have experienced in your life, sometimes um, students listen to students more than they listen to us. So we ensure that we have a good group of trained students who can provide some support uh, as well. You'll also notice at the bottom of the screen, um, students can email ask311 with, with any questions. So that's the second thing I'd like you to remember. First, it went in doubt, contact the dean's office and we can usually connect you to the right person. Second, if your son or, or daughters are curious about what to do or they don't seem to know who to connect to or they have a question, they can email ask311 through their campus email account and they'll actually get a response. So, one of the things I want to share before we close is what are our approaches like generally in the Dean of the College Division in working with your son and daughter. We really do see them as adults. And we will encourage them to stretch a little bit toward adulthood. So the role of the undergraduate deans is to help students function responsibly and independently, to locate appropriate resources, to be able to access information as they need, to act appropriately in addressing their own concerns and interests, 
and to assume the right level of responsibility as young adults. So as we partner, what are the things that you can count on us for? You can count on us to listen and support your sons and daughters. You can count on us to help them to learn to problem solve on their own with support. You can assume that we will work to always connect your sons and daughters to resources. We'll encourage students to seek guidance from you. Sometimes they're going to ask big questions. And the undergraduate deans will say, what, are your, what does your family think? Have you had a conversation with folks at home? Because sometimes it provides good balance. We will encourage them to foster independence, and we will communicate with you when we really think it's important. What we won't do, we won't go knock on your son or daughter's door to wake them up and tell them to go to class. <laughs> now, if you want to make a, an arrangement for the phone call that's going to come to them to ensure they get up, feel free. I might suggest that that's not exactly how we envision fostering independence. <laughs> but I do know sometimes that might be necessary, too. So some of the things that you can do are the same things. Listen and be supportive. Help your son or daughter to problem solve on their own. Encourage them to use the resources. All I want you to do is to reflect on, and I probably shouldn't say this too loudly, but reflect on the resources that you're pouring into Dartmouth College to, uh, to ensure that they're successful. Ins make sure your sons and daughters get their money's worth. Encourage them to seek resources, ask for help, ask questions. And there is no dumb question. One of the things that I've observed about Dartmouth students is that they all have, are on the ball all the time. And they don't like to show that some days they're not sure. They're supposed to be not sure in their first year here. So encourage them to use the resources that you're paying for. Offer guidance and support, especially when it's asked for. You'll find it's more effective then. Foster independence and communicate with the deans when you need to. So those are some of the resources that we bring to bear. Um, and I hope you will encourage your sons and daughters to, to use them. So I want to just reflect back on this concept of roots and wings. Remember that they need your support. I think the motto for today's session was partnering for success. Parents and families are the backbone of the Dartmouth student community. I truly believe that. Their success um, happens because of you, and we do uh, all we can do to partner with you to make sure that that happens. So. Um, we're going to move to the next portion of today's program, which will provide you with an opportunity to touch base with colleagues from a range of departments in concurrent sessions that are happening throughout the building. They're happening from 3 to 4 and also from 4 to 5. In addition, we are so thankful to the Dartmouth Club of the Upper Valley and the Alumni Relations Office for hosting a resource area and a little bit of refreshments uh, in the building at what we call the Top of the Hop, uh, featuring colleagues from a range of student affairs departments. If you don't have a copy of the schedule or if you need assistance navigating the building, there are some wonderful folks in the back of the room wearing green uh, t-shirts. They are our green key student staff, and they will assist you to ensure that you get to the place you need to and that you uh, indeed have the information you need. So as we close, congratulations to each of you on the incredible triumph you've just completed today of having your sons and daughters safely tucked into their rooms. It will be an exciting fall term. The class of 2013 is especially fortunate because their orientation and their experience over the next two weeks will be wrapped around President Kim's inauguration, which is going to be just fantastic. So to watch 
President Kim and this incredible class of 13 and um, uh, transfer students and study abroad students come together and launch the next phase of what it means to be at Dartmouth is going to be so very exciting. Have a good day. Enjoy your time here, however short it may be, and take care. Thank you. Thank you.